Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look into what Kanban is, what the principles and practices of Kanban are and a couple of real-life implementation examples. Kanban is a visual method of managing a process and the actual work done in the process. It is essentially a workforce management system which is visual. The objective in using Kanban is to identify potential problems or bottlenecks in the process and fix them on time to ensure optimal resource utilization. Just like Kaizen, Kanban originated in Japan and was developed for managing Toyota's just-in-time production system. A Kanban system can be used to control entire value chains from suppliers to customers ensuring that delays and overstocking are reduced at every stage. How does Kanban work? Kanban is essentially a non-disruptive change management system. This means we map out existing processes and make gradual improvements to them without making drastic changes in the whole process. And since Kanban is a visual system, the first step is to visualize the process. This can be done by a simple white or blackboard outlining tasks and marking them as to do, in progress or done as shown in the graphic here. This is the most simplest form of Kanban that can be of course. Here to do represents tasks which haven't yet started or the backlog. Doing categorizes the tasks in progress and done categorizes tasks which are complete. The sticky notes contain the actual tasks. As the status of a task changes, we move the note from one column to the other. Like if a task under to do is going to be done now, we're going to transport it over to the doing column and so on. As you can imagine, a project workflow from an actual organization will be a lot more complex than the flow outlined here. Organizations implementing Kanban usually make use of a Kanban project management software to manage the projects. The titles for their Kanban board might not be as simple as the ones in this example. But more than a tool being used to visualize your workflow, there are certain principles and practices one needs to take into account to implement Kanban efficiently. Now let's look at these now. There are four core Kanban principles which are as follows. First, start with what you do now. Now Kanban is a non-disruptive method as discussed, so it emphasizing not making radical changes to your existing workflow. Kanban must be applied to the current workflow and the changes needed in the workflow is to be introduced gradually and applied at a steady pace to ensure buy-in from the teams and stakeholders. Implementation will typically start with analyzing current work processes by change management professionals. The next step is agree to pursue incremental evolutionary change. Making significant changes to processes is always challenging and there is a high likelihood of internal resistance. Kanban encourages small incremental changes that build on each other. This ensures a high likelihood of the changes being accepted by the stakeholders and the changes resulting in noticeable efficiencies brought in over time. Alongside the implementation team, every member of the project or process needs to be bought into the idea of the improvements being introduced. The third step is respect the current processes, roles, responsibilities and job titles. This principle makes reference to structural changes to the organization. Unlike some other change management models, Kanban doesn't encourage imposing structural changes. Existing processes will be analyzed as part of the implementation process. We need to ensure that we take note of the existing roles and functions that are performing well. The change team needs to collaboratively identify and implement changes only if necessary. This once again goes a long way in ensuring minimal disruptions. The fourth principle is encourage acts of leadership at all levels. 
when it comes to addressing issues, people at all levels should be equipped to take ownership and address these issues. The transparency introduced by Kanban should ensure that team members should be able to take action to rectify issues themselves and present data to back their actions up. This approach encourages team members to lead improvement initiatives and grow professionally and personally. Now let's look into Kanban practices. Kanban is a system wherein you respect existing practices and only start work where there is a need for a deliverable. Nothing is changed for the sake of changing things. And Kanban practices are designed to help get the best out of the implementation. Let's look at what these practices are. The first practice is visualize the workflow. Since Kanban is a visual method, the first step is to visualize the steps you currently use to deliver your work or product or service. You can use a physical board or an electronic board for this step, depending on the complexity of the workflow. If the choice is an electronic board, there are various online tools available for you to do this. It is always best to start simple and if needed, add nuances and complexities and finer details later the next practice is limit wip which is work in progress it is important to limit wip to ensure that the team is focused on finishing tasks and ensuring that existing tasks are completed before new tasks are taken on this will ultimately improve efficiency and reduce unnecessary multitasking by the team the third practice is manage flow this step is the crux of the Kanban system. We essentially try to understand the flow of work and try to optimize it. By visually mapping the flow, we get an idea about the various stages of our flow and the status of work at each stage. We can also see how we transition from one panel to another on our Kanban board. You should always be trying to simplify your workflow by eliminating any bottlenecks and problem areas and making the transitions as smooth as possible. The fourth practice is make process policies explicit. Process policies here could simply refer to the rules and guidelines each person is expected to follow to deliver consistent results. It is important that these policies or rules be formulated and documented so that every participant understands how work needs to be carried out. The fifth step is implement feedback loops. Kanban emphasizes the use of feedback loops to ensure areas of improvements are identified. Feedback can come from team members, stakeholders or even customers depending on the work that's being carried out. The last practice is improve collaboratively. Kanban encourages collaboration and experimentation to continually introduce improvements and ultimately deliver better results for the customers. Collaboration helps in making continual improvements easier. Now let's look into a couple of real life implementation examples for Kanban. The first Kanban implementation example comes from Spotify. Spotify in 2010 had an enviable problem that the company was growing faster than what their operations team could accommodate. The operations team back then consisted of seven people. The problem that the ops team faced was that a lot of urgent jobs from other departments got in the way of their own internal projects. They decided to use a Kanban card to use the problem. The Kanban card they used is as follows. In their Kanban system, they decided for one team member to be like a goalie who would look at all the ad hoc requests that they receive and categorize them either as small tasks which could be done immediately or larger tasks which would need a new card in their Kanban. Their Kanban board consists of two main rows, as you can see, tangible and intangible. The goalie would categorize ad hoc requests under tangible and the intangible row consisted of the important proactive work that needed doing. The internal work needed to be done to improve the department. 
A third row was later added to the Kanban board for issues which needed to be expedited. There could only be a maximum of one task in this row to discourage its usage. They also set a low threshold for the to-do column so that the tasks here are actually done and this ensured that the list is only refreshed once a week. And lastly, the threshold for the doing column was set to team members minus one and they intended to reduce it further to encourage sharing of tasks. The outcome of their Kanban implementation was that more of their internal tasks were getting done and the overall task lead times also went down. The next example of Kanban implementation that we're looking at is from Volvo IT and this comes from 2013 and Volvo IT is the internal IT services and maintenance division for the Volvo group. Now VIT had two systems available for their use. One was called IAT or internal administration tool which catered to all users and the second was called WINST which was specifically for their IT service users. So these are internal support mechanisms that they put in place. Having two separate systems resulted in a few operational issues like lack of efficiency, slow response and a non-standardized system to solving problems. A physical Kanban board was used to increase efficiency and remove bottlenecks. Their Kanban board looked as below. The board consisted of four rows, two rows for IAT and two rows for WINST requests. The columns of the board were aligned to the service statuses in the IAT, which were requirement, request, proposal and so on. Different team members attended Kanban meetings twice every week to ensure everyone understood how to use the board, prioritize tasks and accomplish tasks. They also implemented a separate ready board to enlist all problems which were solved. This would ensure that the team remains motivated to solve their issues. The implementation of the Kanban system here resulted in fewer bottlenecks and their teams meeting their productivity goals. And now that we've seen Kanban being used by organizations around the world, we got a question if we can actually use Kanban in our personal life. The obvious use of Kanban would be to create a weekly task list for yourself and slot tasks into the to-do and doing categories at the start of the week. And as you evaluate at the end of the week how many tasks are done and how many need moving to a new board for the following week, you can see that you are actually very efficiently managing the tasks on a weekly basis and you know exactly what was done and what wasn't done. Another very useful application would be in planning holidays. If you have an exotic holiday in mind, you could make a list of all the things that you need looking into and prepare a board specifically for that trip. The items in the list could, could vary from booking tickets for various places to visit in the destination to things needed for the prep like travel, insurance, purchasing of new bags or vaccinations. So you can see that you can get really organized this way and avoid any regrets later. So over to you now. Do you think you'll be using Kanban for um, any upcoming holidays or any life events anytime soon? Do you think Kanban can be used and should be used in your everyday personal life as well? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for your attendance to this tutorial. And if you have any topics that you want to recommend to be covered in this channel, please make use of the comment section. Please share the content in this channel. Please like, please subscribe and please take good care of yourself. Thank you very much. Bye bye.